All right. We're live. Yeah. Rested Power, the Trayvon Martin story, competes at the Emmys at a time of national reckoning about race and police relations. I'm Charlie Bright of Gold Derby here with the film's executive producer, Chachi Sr., uh, who had to open a lot of obstacles to get this uh, to get this made, um, including some lingering ones about uh, one of the film's subjects, George Zimmerman. So, Chachi, I have to ask, was there any fear that uh, Trayvon's killer, George Zimmerman, uh, may strike again or, or retaliate somehow against this film? Uh, I mean, I think he verbally retaliated and, and, you know, there was definitely some verbal threats. When we went into it, there was never a, we never thought there was, you know, we, we never anticipated that there was going to be retaliation or threats or anything like that. Um, but no, I mean, we, 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 we weren't really concerned and then there were some threats made. And then after the threats were made, we sort of just, you know, backed away from them essentially. And, and by, by the way, by the time, um, Zimmerman was actually making the threats. We had already, it was done. We were done shooting. We were in edit at that point. So. Uh, did you, but, you know, ever get to the point not, where uh, you or someone involved uh, considered uh, taking legal action against him? Um, I can't, I definitely didn't. I never had to take legal action against him. Um, I will not get into specifics about one of the other executive producers and what they had to do, but there were definitely, there was some legal action taken against him, um, but it came from the private investigator that we had hired for the actual project. Um, but, but no, there was never, nothing from us directly. So um, you've worked uh, with uh, Jenner and Julia uh, who directed this movie yep. beforehand. Uh, what made uh, them and you as executive the producer feel that this was the right time for this documentary. Wow. Um, well, I mean, first and foremost, I have to praise Jenna and Julia for th how amazing they are as, you know, a directing team um, and as an executive producing team as well. We had come off of doing time, the Cleve Browder story together where they co-directed that. Um, and we started talking about doing this project internally. And I was at Paramount network at the time and it was, you know, I, I mean, there's there's never a wrong time, I think, to make, to make a project like this that's that important. Um, but having come off of that project and having access to this story, it was a no brainer to just move forward. Um, and I and you know, it's I don't like to say things. I don't like to talk about these things in terms of success and not success. But the the Khalif Browder story was very well received. You know, we won a Peabody for it. Um, so it was a you know and and. We affected some 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 law changes in New York, so it was very much you know sort of the best possible scenario. So so when the opportunity arose to do the Trayvon Martin story, it, again it was just a no brainer to just go right into it. You know we essentially finished the Cleve Browder story and went right into Trayvon. You know I think with a sort of like a two month hiatus from the time we were um, exhibiting the Cleve Browder story and then and and going into full on pre production on this. And one of, the executive, one of the other executive producers of this is uh, Jay-Z. How did he become involved with the project? Actually, so, so Jay-Z brought it to us. Um, so, so uh, you know, again, it's hard, it's, in talking about this project, I always sort of talk about both of them, time and rest in power, just because it was a whole package. We did, we did rest in power. We did um, the Khalif Browder story, and it was with Rock Nation, Jay-Z, and Jenner and Julia and the Cinemart. Um, the only difference with this project is when when Jay-Z came to us with the project, and by us, I mean Paramount, the network, um, the, the directors, Julia and Jenner, were not attached yet. Um, and it was very, very clear that we would be using them, that it would be the same exact team that did the other project, if that makes sense. Um, but Jay was all in all from the beginning on this one. You know, there was never any doubt. Um, in fact, I think he does some work or, or maybe his wife does some work on the, the, with the Trayvon Martin foundation. Like he's always been supportive. Uh, was there anyone you were surprised was willing to participate? You get a, the, a pretty interesting, uh, group of people that, uh, were interviewed for this. Was there anyone who you were surprised was willing to participate? Um, 
I wasn't surprised. I mean, again, I, I credit Julie and Jenner with, you know, and Mike Asparo as well with, with doing an amazing job at getting all the interviews. We had a full list of, I mean, they had so many people interviewed that people, people that are, that were surprising didn't even make the documentary. They had just so much content. Um, I was surprised that anyone essentially that this affected on a personal level. And, and by, I mean, beyond Sabrina and Tracy, I mean, this, you know, this story affected this country, but it also affected Sanford. It affected, it affected them, the, the, the citizens of Sanford so majorly. I was surprised, yes, that, you know, that, some of the police that were involved would 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 want to sort of reopen these wounds. So you know, but with documentary, it's always like you're 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 never really sure who you're going to get, and oftentimes the people that are most directly affected by whatever subject matter you're you're tackling, um, they're the hardest to get. So I was surprised. You know, it it sounds like a cheat, but I was surprised that everyone did it. If that makes sense, so, you know, like to go into to go into this town that had sort of like moved on from this scenario in a time where the, where our country sort of like back, you know, tail spinning out of control to a worse place than it was even back then. And to allow for these filmmakers to come in and open up these old, old wounds. Um, you know, I did not think it was going to happen this way. I was very, you know, I was, I was excited and surprised. And uh, did you learn anything uh, new about the case or the trial uh, that took you by surprise uh, over the course of the making of this film? Wow. I mean, every, you know, like I followed this story so intently when it was unfolding in real time. Right. But all we ever knew was what we were being fed by the media. Um, what I didn't know, what I didn't remember, at least, you know, um, was how empowered the sort of right wing, the, the, you know, the, 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 the the, the alt-right, how empowered they were during the trial and sort of how, you know, what was the most surprising? I forgot completely that even when it first, when, when the incident first occurred and it first started hitting the press, I was surprised that some of the right wing, right, right wing media was supportive of Trayvon. And then, you know, the second that Obama said, you know, I could have been, it could have been me or what, I don't know his, his exact words. It sort of turned the right wing media and then it became this race thing. It just became this whole, like, and that, I did not remember it specifically happening when this all happened. You know what I mean? Like, and I was living in New York when it happened. I went to the march um, when it all happened, but uh, it was very, that's the part that when I was seeing the footage and I was seeing the edits come in from the, from when Jenner and Julie were sending cuts in, I was like, you know, it was, it was like this holy shit moment. Like, oh my God, yes, that did happen. Right. And it was, it was interesting because, you know, I don't know where you sit politically, but when you're, you always assume that the right wing media is going to kind of just go, if you're on the left, they're going to kind of go to a place. And I was surprised to see that they weren't there until Obama, right. When it became a political thing, that's when they went, they didn't, when it was simply a story about, you know, a young black man who had been killed by a, white person, even that Fox News wasn't jumping all over it. It wasn't until a little bit later. So I was surprised by that. Uh, and it feels like also, was there, I'm also curious, was there any specifically about the trial uh, that, that that surprised you in revisiting that? Because uh, that, that image of uh, after the verdict came in, that press conference that uh, what's her name? Angela Corey. Angela Corey. Name? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that she had afterwards. I was uh, dumbfounded when right, I was watching like, that. It was offensive. I mean, the whole thing was offensive. I mean, I, I don't say. I, I will say that. It's funny when you're when you're watching. It's not funny, but it's you know it's interesting when you're watching a documentary like this. When you're watching it episode to episode, when the footage is coming in, and you're you're sort of getting bombarded with all of this at the same time, all this information. I was. The thing that surprised me, or well, what I learned the most about the trial in rewatching it as a film, as opposed to when it was actually happening on CNN and MSNBC and everything, um, was just how wrong, how wrong the prosecution had gotten this. Like how, how, just the, they, they, they blew this case. They blew this case, and and you know, 
the filmmakers they didn't heighten that they just they presented the facts as they were but they were never done it was never sort of presented in this compressed fashion where you're seeing it all unfold in an hour right um so i was i you know angela angela Corey, yes she's a you know I, i'm not going to sit here and just kind of give you all my personal thoughts about what i think that lady is um including her history before the trayvon martin case um right and just just again you know i'm sure you know everything about her and not only the stuff that's been in the documentary but if you do a little more digging on her it's a history it's a long history um but i was i i was really just surprised by how kind of how screwed up the entire um prosecution presented their case like it was just these facts kept coming up i mean they were just they were just idiots essentially i mean do you think that they that they uh, I, I mean yeah do you think that they didn't that they honestly didn't want the conviction or because that's what it kind of looks like when right. you, when you view it in hindsight right it looks like angela corey wanted to get reelected, so she you know um it went for a murder one knowing that she probably wouldn't have gotten that right i mean it's it's um that she went for a lesser charge <laughs> it would have been an easier case to try right so mm -hmm. i can't say for certain that it was thrown on purpose right that it was all planned but i mean as you said you want you watch the doc how did how did you feel after you know and again, the, and the, the filmmakers didn't embellish anything. It was just straight up. This is these are the facts. This is what happened. Well, yeah, I mean that's what it looked like. If that's what it looked like then, and that's what it looks like. You know, that's what it looks like now. Right. Uh, it, yeah. It's just it, it's it was infuriating all over again. Yep. Well, that I, I think that's the best way to describe. That's the best word to describe. Sort of the feeling of the entire doc you if you watch all six episodes it's infuriating to see that that's sort of you know that 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 can happen right that it's happened you know since the beginning of this country but that it can happen still today or six years ago five years ago um and then it continues to happen but it isn't the whole thing is infuriating like it's it's unbelievable like when you really look at it um but it happens yeah um and so I also was just thinking, uh, wondering, so um, you are going to be submitting this in the uh, nonfiction program categories. Sometimes uh, Emmy categories will ask to, will only nominate a single episode of something's multi-episode. Right. And I was wondering if there's one episode of, of this documentary that you feel uh, stands out from the rest. You know, it's hard. I, I actually, yeah yes i think this for me i enjoy enjoyed the second episode for me was the most sort of this for me has always been the strongest episode um but in terms of the submissions for the emmys it's sort of a it becomes a different conversation because if you submit the second episode it's sort of in a vacuum if they haven't watched the whole series so i would say for for emmy consideration i we're probably going to submit the first or the sixth episode, if it becomes one app, you know, because those two episodes sort of, the first episode sets everything up, but it also even just w with the sort of tease at the top of the episode, it sets up what the whole, what you're gonna get. So you, and, and because everyone does know the case, they kind of, you can feel where it goes. The sixth episode sort of recaps everything and then also gets you to the end. So just in terms of strategy I'm talking about for Emmys, it's, you know, yeah, one has to assume that if you're submitting one episode, it's the only episode that the the, the Academy is going to watch and vote for. You'd hope that they would watch all six and have it in context, but it's a difficult thing, you know, to just watch episode two or episode three, which by themselves might be really strong, but you need the information from episode one, if that makes sense. Uh, that makes perfect sense. Oh. Well, um, uh, th thanks, Chachi, uh, for uh, talking with us. To all your viewers, go to goldderby.com right now and make your predictions so you can compete against our experts, editors, and other fans and prove if you are the smartest prognosticator in Hollywood. But before you go, click our subscribe button on this video so you're alerted to our great chats with top contenders. Thanks so much, Chachi. Thank you so much for doing this, man.